There is no deadline for success. Mm -hmm. The journey for some may take a little longer than others. And things to care about, we feature people who have persevered to reach career highs. Kara, who's up first? I'm so excited about this. I am too. Now, this first gentleman we're going to talk about had a little bit of a renaissance in the past few years because during lockdown, his show, The Magic of Oil, oh, no, no, wait, wait. What was his show called? It, not the magic of oil, but anyway, we're talking about Bob Ross. Bob Ross, and everybody everyone. was in lockdown, started rediscovering Bob Ross if you yes. didn't know him before. And taking up painting. Yes. <laughs> All right. So listen to this. But did you know that he was actually in the Air Force for 20 years? That's where he fell in love with painting because he would take painting classes on his Air Force base, and then Look at that. he ended up retiring from the military as a master sergeant because. During that time, he started selling paintings of his Alaskan landscapes. He then started traveling around selling. He was making more money doing that. He learned all of this by watching a TV show with a German painter called The Magic of Oil Painting, okay? Then That's the orange, how he self-taught. Yes, the or, well, no, he took a class. Okay. He took uh, a class, but he, but then he just, he liked it so much. He sort of, um, and people started telling him, you should do this on your own and sell your paintings. Um, but he basically was self-taught from watching a TV show. Right. But it was instructional, kind of just like his was. Now, his show was called The Joy of Painting, okay? It was filmed oh, at that PBS studio in Muncie, Indiana, also I, where I went to college. Who knew that? Um, I didn't. What? Know, yes. It was filmed in Muncie. I worked at that station. It's so strange. Um, that's <laughs> awesome. It, I it, love that. That's a great story. I mean, isn't it really? Yes. It's so crazy. And then, um, so he, it's okay. So, so then he um, he got acclaim because he started this show. People started watching it. Um, he started getting reviews. People were likening him to Mr. Rogers. The show ran for eleven years, and obviously, like I said at the beginning, had this renaissance in the last few years. Um, he died in the mid '90s, and there's a new documentary though about Ooh, him now. I gotta see. Um, but it's it's really interesting. He had one child, um, and the child um, was also a painter, but obviously is not as well known as as his father. But it's very it's just interesting because he had this whole other life, and then he sort of just discovered this passion later and I love that I want to say somebody we know was Bob Ross at for Halloween oh yeah that was my husband that's a <laughs> I was a happy tree and my husband was Bob Ross okay that's uh, it Lee yeah. I knew it I was like was it Lee it was okay gold chain who doesn't want to be Bob Ross I know um all right this next person uh I love her I've been listening to a radio show on Sirius for a long time but um Bevy Smith okay, okay. So she's pu publishing a memoir this year it looks really good I can't wait to read it but um so this is interesting so so she was actually a powerful fashion executive and then at 38 years old she tells a story about how she was in Milan she was so run down she was like I'm not happy she did this complete pivot at 38 taking what she knew from her fashion executive life and sort of parlaying that into what she became so what she became was um, a TV and radio star essentially she took improv classes oh, she depleted wow. her savings to do it at 38 years old um, and how she she said she That's was so broke that incredible. she started hosting these fashion dinners with people in the industry that knew who she was because of her fashion connections right and she said she actually got offered a show seven years before she kind of made it big but she put all her chips in her own basket believed in herself she said it was probably not the best decision she's like I was kind of naive to do it right she said but I just kept believing believing grinding grinding um, seven years after that she got her show on Bravo she has a show on Sirius and her biggest she calls them bevelations darling she says bevelations yes and she says it gets greater later that's her self I oh my gosh Isn't that good? it gets, it gets greater, greater later, later. Mm -hmm. indeed Very it does good, huh? and I, I just love it because I feel so many of us so I mean everything we've gone yeah. through the last two years people are are pivoting. I know we've overused sure. that word, but I mean, they. I think we've all dug down deep to say, what is it that I really right. want? What's my purpose? Right. And it is never too late. Yeah. At the ripe it's old not. age of fifty-two. It's I'm, not. I'm, and well, and I was gonna no, say, I love and, my job. I mean, <laughs> no. And I, I mean, I think we. It's like reframing where we are because I think it's it's such a luxury to feel like you have that um, decision. But people who have made that decision say, like Bevy did. She was like, I was broke. I didn't have anything, but I knew there was something that was calling me so pay attention to that interval okay attention. Um, okay let's uh, we're getting to this next one Colonel Sanders Colonel Sanders Can you know you like his chicken he was a, a failure who got fired from a dozen jobs before oh. he started his chicken restaurant 
Then he found himself broke at the age of 65, what? according to one account about his life story. He worked things out, though, and sold his first restaurant chicken franchise in 1952, and then he sold the franchise business 12 years later for $2 million. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. Colonel Sanders got a late start, and yeah. well, the rest is history. Yeah, I, we'll post this online. I don't think we have time for the next two, but oh. the next two are just like fierce females, uh, Julia Child and Toni Morrison.